Happy Holidays, viewers! This is Sparkster1701, and today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite of the Generation 1 toys that I happened to get as a present during this holiday season all those years ago. We're taking a look today at the Generation 1 Autobot City Commander Ultra Magnus. Ultra Magnus was released in 1986 as part of the Movie Heroes to coincide with the release of the animated feature film. He would also be available in 1987. He would be discontinued in 1988 and we did not get a replacement for him. Ultra Magnus is one of the higher ranking Autobots in their group despite the fact that Magnus himself prefers more to just follow the orders of Optimus Prime instead of being forced to lead troops into battle. He tends to think of himself more as a soldier instead of a leader, which Optimus extremely doubts. He knows that Magnus is more than capable of being a competent leader in the field is interesting due to the fact that part of what makes up Ultra Magnus here is a slightly redone version of the Optimus Prime toy and we'll take a look at that here shortly. First let's take a look at the articulation that's available on Ultra Magnus and it really isn't much in this mode but it's still pretty substantial. The arms can rotate at the shoulder, and as you can hear, they ratchet at the shoulder. They can be turned all the way around, just like that. He does tend to drop his gun fairly easily after all these years of play wear. The arm, he can also bend his arms at the elbow. And there is, believe it or not, unlike most of them, there is a swivel at the elbow, at the bicep, so it does allow for his arms to be put out to the sides, giving you a rather wide variety of posing options for this. Put the gun back in there. One other thing to point out to you, especially importantly, are these launchers. Now, in previous years, they still had some spring action in them due to the change in the toy laws. They were basically neutered from their original Japanese versions. These, here on Ultra Magnus, have no springs in them. So, pushing back on the release button here does not fire the missile. It just allows you to take it out. And as you can see, they fall out pretty easily, too. What well, can you say? Old parts. Another thing to point out is that there is a variation to this toy. Well, i got to mess with that if it's going to keep falling out. In that, the first variation that's noticeable is for the head. Earlier versions of the head had silver paint along the antenna and on the face. But later releases come in this solid blue color that you're seeing here before you. Something you'll need to watch out when you're buying loose samples is to see if somebody has painted this over. That is quite a common occurrence on the secondary market. Another thing is the fact that the wheels down here will also either be made of rubber on earlier versions or are solid plastic like this one is. Now there are some that state that this version of Ultra Magnus, this the way it is right here, the no paint on the face and the plastic wheels, was an exclusive to the KB Toys store chain, and while that does have some possibilities to it, as there was a KB Toys near my home in 1986, 
when this toy would have been available, I'm not entirely certain that it was an exclusive. But since I did get him in 1986, it is possible. But he could have all, they could have also been, by that time, phasing out the old parts in favor of the new. Okay, to start transforming him, before we get into that, I want to show that he's basically two separate forms of toy. First is basically all this armor that the robot is wearing, and the rest of it, as we turn him around, is basically a smaller Optimus Prime toy. So we'll start by transforming him back into the regular robot. First by removing him from the armor. We'll set the armor aside here. Then on this, we just take the head off. Fold down the feet so that he can stand. Bring the headlights out to the sides. And then grab the smokestack areas, pull them back, and pivot them around. And then lastly... We attach in his fists into the headlights, just exactly what you would do for Optimus Prime. And of course, we reach over here to the armor and steal the gun, but we turn it upside down on Ultra Magnus here, so that the small robot can use it. And there's the small robot for Ultra Magnus. Something else to point out on the earlier variant of it, this little robot here would have some paint along the face of it, like up here at the crown and the mouth cover, were painted in a light bluish color, similar to what the head and most of the armor sections are painted up as. I also believe, if I remember correctly, the fuel tanks down here Bring them up close so you can see. The fuel tanks would be in chrome instead of the solid white here. Basically, they would match the chrome look that's on Optimus Prime here. Now, while we've got Optimus with him, I want to make it clear to you that no, the two toys cannot both use the armor. The wheelbase on Ultra Magnus is wider than what it is on Optimus Prime, so Optimus cannot be snapped into the armor. We'll go ahead and we'll transform him like we could for that. And we'll show you. Put him in. Well, actually, I guess my sources were incorrect. As there he is, folks. He's mounted in. He is mounted in there. Yeah, it works. Just don't see it working right, but that does go with some of the other various media. Things like the Milton Bradley 3D puzzle that inadvertently uses Optimus, the Optimus cab, for the three-dimensional building of Ultra Magnus. Yeah, it's confusing. Maybe sometime I'll put the puzzle up here and show, and show it off to all of you. But anyway, let's... Get the armor out, of, get the shadow of the armor out of the way. We'll bring Magnus back out here and let you have a look at him. The articulation is pretty much the same as what it was on the Optimus Prime toy. You can rotate his arm at the shoulder, and the arm does bend here at the elbow, so you can move it the whole 90 degrees. Since his fists are attached on in a post, they can be rotated, so he does inadvertently have a joint at the wrist. The joint at the hip allows the legs to bend backward, 
and a joint at the knee allows him to slightly bend like that at the knee, and of course, a joint at the ankle. And that more or less covers this version of the figure. <clears throat> Battery's getting low here on the camera. We're going to change those and then we'll transform him fully into his alternate mode. Okay, now that we got some fresh batteries, it's time to transform Ultra Magnus. We start by removing the fists and the rifle from the small robot. And basically his transformation will go exactly the same way as you saw last month with Optimus Prime. Rotate the head back all the way. Take the shoulders and move them to his backside. And push them flush against the truck body. Grab the arms and swing them into the side. Secure them in tightly. Fold down his feet. And then bring the legs all the way back. And that gets us the first part. The truck cab. Now while it's still, it's still the same kind of truck cab that Optimus was. A Freightliner COE. It's also going to take a more futuristic look when we get the trailer ready. So let's shove him aside for the moment. And we bring the trailer back. And to get the trailer ready, we got to remove the missile launchers. The fists. The chest plate. And the hip plate. I keep this hip plate nearby. We're going to need it in a moment. Now, on the trailer, you take the legs and fold them like this so, so that they're straight up. Pop them free from the red tabs and just bring it on up like that. Then you're going to touch these little white pegs that are sticking out on the side and push them inward so that they'll put a bracket in here inside. This is going to help support the arms. You go back here to the arms and we're going to rotate them at the shoulder. So this part is pointing straight up. And same thing on the other side. Then we'll bend the elbows all the way up so that they're straight as well. Then you're going to grab it and drag it all the way, drag it so that this white piece up here comes all the way flush. Then you'll grab where his forearms were. And pull them out as well. Ugh. He's getting a little ahead of me here, folks. Now, up here, these sections just snap open and swing out pretty wild. Just snap them open and bring the arms up and together, connecting them both to the shoulder and the forearm. And then, just gently ratchet this all the way back. And then now, you'll take the hip piece, and you're going to connect it with the circle pointing upwards towards these two windows. Just fasten that in there. And then you take that circle, and you place it right on the post on Ultra Magnus's truck. And there you have it, folks. Ultra Magnus has become something of a futuristic car carrier. For some added fun, you can even mount the missile launchers here on the front. And you have an attack me, a means of attacking. It's on plastic wheels, so it does roll fairly good. And of course, like Optimus, since it's attached pretty loosely, the truck does turn 
The trailer does follow suit pretty easily. Ultra Magnus can hold about three of the regular sized Autobots on the trailer here. One fits down here in the bottom and you can lay two of them on the top. Might have some overhang hanging over if you use some, a longer one like Blur. But for added fun on loading, for pretend loading, you can lower these white ramps down to the ground to simulate one driving in. If you want to get one to simulate driving on the top, all I have to do is raise the arm up a little bit and fold the supports up against the wall. Then you can ratchet that piece down. And there you go. You can drive an Autobot car up through it. Then when you're done, just have to slide the legs out just a little bit. Make it wide enough. And then put the supports back in. And there you have it. All sorts of good fun. But we're not done yet with it. Oh no, we're not done yet. So I do happen to have a copy of some of the before and set of his instructions that I managed to purchase off of eBay. And it does show a few other play options that are available. <clears throat> I wouldn't recommend you trying to pause and read this, folks, due to the fact that they're not exactly the most clear copy of the instructions, but it does give some different play options for it. Like you can instead, we remove the missile launchers, raise these up a bit, and you have a small launch ramp for airplanes. Possibly one of my favorites, we get, old, get the cab out of here, remove the connector, raise these up, and separate it, fold it over, and then instead swing these downward, swing the arms to point downward, rotate them at the elbow, and then bend it, open these up up here at the front as best as it'll do from all this play wear. And we have some sort of strange looking mobile base. Actually, I don't have any idea what in the world this is, but it's kind of interesting. At least gives us some more options, unlike what the Hasbro instructions gave us. Now we'll take a look at the loose parts that Ultra Magnus came with, and as you can see, he came with quite a few pieces. We'll start with, like we showed you earlier, the large robot head. As I said, this is the solid blue variant, the more common one. As I mentioned, you got to watch. Some people do tend to paint the face and the antenna silver to try to match the original version. But you can usually tell one that's suffered from play wear and one that's been painted over badly. The only other blue part that he has is the chest shield. Now, one thing that you might notice about it is right here is a seat. This was, again, for the Diaclone line that the toy came from originally. If you look 
on the underside, along the sides of it here, like right up here down near the bottom of it and along the rear sections here of the sides are little grooves. These were to attach wheels into the thing and this unit would be capable of rolling along the ground. Another feature that you could have used once I pick the head back up is the slot here on the middle of the head would connect to this post on the top of the chest shield and it gave you some form of attack vehicle. I mean, doesn't exactly look the best, but does just kind of swoosh okay. The only major downside is that the head does sit on it kind of loose. So you won't be pulling too many incredibly acrobatic stunts with it. Ultra Magnus also comes with two of these rocket launchers. There's really not much to see on them. They're built exactly the same, so we'll just look at the one here. It has two posts on the side, so that way it can be mounted to either shoulder when he's in the super robot mode. And they have a hole in the back side, so they can be mounted on the front of it in car carrier mode. As I said, there is no spring inside this, so it just holds the missiles. It will not launch them at all. Ultra Magnus also includes two of these. These are the cab connectors. Comes with two, that way if you lose one, you can still have another one to be able to connect him to his trailer in vehicle mode since unlike with Optimus whose trailer had a spot made for it this one sacrifices it since it'd be in the way of merging the robot with the trailer. As you can see there's not a lot of detail on it and on the back it's just hollow. Remember for Ultra Magnus to be complete he has two of these. Also get laser rifle. This is Ultra Magnus's gun. Holds it like this, like normally when he's as the large robot. But you turn it over, and that's how the small robot holds it. Looks kind of good both ways. Seems well designed to accommodate it for both. It's not perfect by any means, but it does the job pretty well. I like it. You will also have two small fists. These are exactly just like the regular fists that Optimus Prime comes with, but they're also in solid white. They got the holes here at the top to mount the rifle. Also have two large fists. You can see they have holes in the backside to connect it to the trailer. And of course, they've got a pretty large groove in the center of them to put the gun in. These are the most susceptible to play wear. As after years of putting the gun in, taking it out, they do tend to wear out very easily, so you'll have to watch for that if you intend to display your Ultra Magnus with him holding the rifle. You might want to make sure he has a decent hand to, to hold it. And lastly, he comes with four of these bright red missiles. And nothing fancy about them. They got a little X pattern. For their fins. That's basically about it folks. Pretty decent wealth of accessories. Now we'll take a look at the instructions for Ultra Magnus. This is I'm sure I've got them all unfolded right? Yep there we go. 
following still in the same pattern they were doing since the year prior. And a large page here to show off, if I can hold on to it, that is, all of the pieces. It shows here how to set up the car carrier, like making sure to attach the darn butterfingers, attaching the cab connector. And move down here and mount the missile launchers. And then how to turn him into the small robot, which makes sense. And then once you're done with that, turn them over to the back side. And you start mounting, start shifting things for building the larger robot. Which one has to marvel that it is engineering dream to have worked out how to get the trailer to shift like that and still be semi-useful. And then you get a large sheet for attaching stickers to both forms of the robot. And of course a couple there on the trailer. Now here for the last page they kind of broke things up a little bit. Possibly due to having the extra page. As you see on this side, this page, it just has the robot points and how to read the text spec. But they did a big spread here on the last page for the authenticity section. Find the heat sensitive label. Which, as you saw when we were transforming him, is on the underside of the small robot's head. Now we'll move straight on to his tech spec. Really wish I had the box to show you, but I don't. It's done up in red to show he's an Autobot and even says it. It has a nice picture of him that's been used in a lot of the promotional material. Although strangely, the chest shield on the picture here is white instead of in blue. It gives his name as Ultra Magnus, and his function is City Commander, which would mean he is in charge of the Autobot City Metroplex. And his motto is, Consistency is Victory. Ultra Magnus is all soldier, most comfortable when carrying out Optimus Prime's orders, possesses magnificent fighting skills, courage, and a gift for battlefield improvisation. Uncomfortable in the mantle of leadership, but, pre but presents strong profile as a commander. Carries missile launchers capable of hitting a target 30 miles away. Resolute, fair, and courageous beyond reproach. Ever ready to sacrifice himself for the good of men and mission. And now we move on to the tech spec. We lay the decoder on the grid and we'll take a look at his stats. It lists his strength as 9, as well as his intelligence. His speed is 6. His endurance and rank are 8. His courage is 9. His firepower is 6. And his skill is 8. So, it does back up the claims that he is a rather capable soldier in battle. Now, if we could only convince him that he's as good of a leader... We'll have something. Before we move on to my final thoughts, let's present something else to you folks. In a lot of the media, Ultra Magnus has surprisingly been seen as a rival to Galvatron. Even though we all know in the lore, Galvatron is basically the reformatted version of Megatron. And since Ultra Magnus is not the Autobot leader, it's often led people to question that. 
which you have to remember, in 1986, we didn't have Facebook or any of the other things of the internet to spoil the secrets of the animated movie. Even some of the early comic books had Megatron and Galvatron as separate characters. And Galvatron's tech spec was definitely written to avoid making any spoilers about the animated movie or to reveal his origins. But it's also played out further in this UK checklist that I have. So we're going to unfold this thing. And show you this rather nice looking picture here. That has Ultra Magnus and Galvatron. And you can see down here, the new leaders. Ultra Magnus v. Galvatron. Interesting thing to look at with it. Especially when we turn things around to the back side. You'll notice here for the Autobot vehicles, you can see Hot Rod down here near the bottom. But strangely, Rodimus is absent. So that says that in the UK in 1986, Rodimus was not for sale. So by default, Ultra Magnus became leader of the Autobots. I guess if you wanted to reenact things from the movie, you had to use your imagination. But these two have long been presented as rivals, and to some degree, the early releases for information on the fourth Transformer movie, Age of Extinction, could possibly be playing up to it, as the new truck that was featured in the movie was originally rumored by a lot of fans to be Ultra Magnus, until it was revealed later that instead it was indeed... Galvatron. So that might have been done to play up on this age-old rivalry that's been set up between the two characters. Or just some food for thought. Now we get down to what do I think of him. I love this toy. I'm a little bit, maybe I'm a little biased on it due to the fact he's one of the few that's been shown here on this channel that I've had since I was a child. But at any rate, it's still a fantastic toy. It's a, the way he stands here in the super robot mode. It's strong, it's imposing, and it can stand up there well with the Galvatron toy, as you saw just a few moments ago. So it does play off pretty well. The features that it has, while they're not the best, there's certainly a lot of play value in what Ultra Magnus has. The added stuff that I showed you from the Japanese instructions are, again, some other play options that just add more to the toy. As a character, Ultra Magnus was always one of, them, of my favorites growing up, and I was shocked to see him get temporarily killed in the animated movie, only to have him resurrected moments later. Interesting bit of trivia for you on that, folks. His death scene that was featured in Transformers the movie was not the original scripted way. Originally, it was intended for the sweeps to latch tow cables on him and rip him apart. I guess they must have deemed that that would have been too violent, so instead they just did like they've done to everybody else in the movie by then and shoot him to death. But at any rate, Ultra Magnus is a great toy to have in your collection, and certainly a nice fallback, especially if you're leading your troops with Rodimus, as Ultra Magnus served as his second-in-command, finally accepting some leadership responsibilities. Ultra Magnus is a top-tier character all the way, folks. And that concludes my review of the Generation 1 Autobot City Commander Ultra Magnus. If 
you like the video, thumbs up it here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Post a comment, share your thoughts, and help keep this channel going. This is Sparkster1701 saying that I wish you all a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate, or go out and enjoy the new Star Wars film. And I'll catch you all later.